Hi everyone, it's Lisa. I'm here for Sean Petit and her creative design team creating a piece for Valentine's Day. I'm working on an 11 by 14 canvas and I'm showing you here how I put down some magazines in the back of my canvas so that I have a sturdier surface. I do this quite often when I use canvases because I don't like them to be um, flexible in the middle. So I just wanted to show you how I taped that in the back there. This is a little bit bigger piece for me and I'm using some papers that I have in my stash. These were given to me by my sister and I believe they're from 1960. So they're quite old. Yep, I'm looking at 1960. And I have some papers that are from my stash. Here's some journal pages. And I'm just going to create this Valentine piece. Here I'm using a stencil that I had in my stash and I'm just using a pencil and drawing out this heart. I will list all the stencils below. This one is something I've had for a long time and I go back to it often. Just drawing those hearts on this piece of journal paper and we'll use them later in the piece. I'm going to cut them out with my scissors. I hope that everyone is enjoying this winter and we're looking forward to spring. I know I am. Sometimes by February and March, I feel like it gets a little bit long. So here I am emptying out a jar of some matte medium, and I'm just putting it down on my canvas with my brush. And I'm using up a few products this time of year, and that makes me happy. I like to use my products up and be able to get some new things. So right now, just putting my papers down, and this paper is pretty fragile, so I have to be pretty careful with it. And I'm just going to adhere it, giving it a coat over the top like we usually do. And I'll get those all stuck down. This piece was a little bit difficult for me. I really wasn't sure what I was going to do. A few times during this video, I thought, oh, I'm just gonna stop. I'm going to get rid of it and start over. But I kept going and I loved how it came out in the end. I've got my papers down and I cut some hearts out of some heavier cardboard and I wanted to use this piece of pattern paper that I found in my stash. It really looked fun to me and I wanted to use it for something special. So I'm going to cover this heart that I just cut out with my scissors, sticking it down with my matte medium and cutting it out with my scissors. My background papers are all dry there, so that's nice. And I have some pieces of heart I was going to possibly use. I didn't use them in the end. And I have some different struggles through this piece. And I left in that part because um, I don't want anyone to think that it's just super easy and it all comes so natural to me. It does not. So I left those struggles in and show you how I overcame them. So now I'm just going to use one of Sean's stencils. This is something I've had in my stash for a while and I haven't got to use it yet. This one is called Door Number One Large. And I'm just going to use that brick area on the sides. I'm not actually going to use the door, but I wanted to use this texture in the back. And I'm using some Deco Arts Crackle Paste and I'm going to put that texture in the back with my um, palette knife there. And this is just a plastic palette knife, real inexpensive tool, but very nice to have in your stash. Another stencil that I use all the time, 
of Sean's. It is a must-have for me, and it's called Mediterranean Duo One. And I go to this stencil all the time. So a great stash builder for you. I would highly recommend it. And the color of paint that I am using right now is a light brown and it is called raw sienna and it's a deco art product another go-to staple for my stash i'm just using a makeup sponge and going through that stencil creating my background now i'm just looking at a color chart and I'm looking at that heart that I'm going to use as a focal point and I'm trying to decide what colors I'm going to use next and the one that I chose is a deco art product and it's called light avocado and I'm putting my paint down on my background with my brush and then I'm using the stencil over the top with a baby wipe and picking up the paint through the stencil I love this technique so I'm going to do it all over the background in some bare spots where I feel that it needs it. And I will catch you back when I get done with this technique. Look how cool it is. Really fun. So here's the background. I decided I was going to use my jelly plate here and I dug out some blue and I wanted to use cerulean blue, another wonderful deco art product. Uh, paint and I'm just going to put that paint down on my jelly plate with a brayer and some gesso and you'll see me doing that here to the right of the project. I'm just grabbing some papers here to put down um, the leftover paint and we'll get started. I feel it's nice to crinkle up that piece of parchment paper and take a little bit of the paint and gesso off of the jelly plate so it's not so bold. Um, I didn't want this color to be baby blue. I did want that cerulean blue to pop through on the background so I'm adding just a little bit more. I didn't want to lose that blue. And I think that this is another one of those techniques that is just a thing that you can keep going back to again and again. It is just a wonderful way to create a beautiful background. I was really liking how the piece was turning out here. And now I wanted to show you how I used a, another stencil by Sean. And this one is butterflies with masks. And here's a, I was trying to figure out how to get just the wings. And I'll show you what I was thinking. I put some tissue paper down with a piece of paper behind it, taped the mask into the stencil, uh, thought about it, well, that wasn't going to work. And thought, well, we'll just do the archival ink with a stencil brush over the top and that wasn't working either. I needed the outline and the in part of the stencil if that makes sense. So I'm trying my jelly plate and some heavy body Liquitex black paint and I'm going to see if I can make an impression like a stamp of the wings and this worked. This um, turned out real well. The first one wasn't very dark, but I tried it again, and after a while, I had some great impressions of wings for the uh, butterflies, and I was going to use those behind my hearts that I had cut out previously. Now I am going to save the um, papers that I have impressed upon with the wings and I'll use them in a different project. So I I finished those um, 
off camera to save some time. Set them aside to dry. Here I'm adding some um, Distress Paint in Mermaid Lagoon with a dry brush to try and add some more um, oomph to that background. And I sprayed a little bit of um, alcohol on there and I'm picking a little bit of that alcohol up with my uh, dry paper towel. And this is really um, how I liked the background. I thought it was looking really good. I just wanted to make it blend a little bit more. And so I'm using some antique white um, acrylic paint on my brayer. And I'm just gently going over the background with that brayer and pulling it all together. And this is where I was like, oh, did I go too far? I'm not sure. I just thought I would keep going and see what happens. I feel that that off-white really neutralizes the piece though, and um, I'm really liking it. I'm trying to see how my heart looks now on the background. And I'm liking it, but I'm just setting out my butterfly wings with my little hearts, kind of getting placement here and seeing what I'm going to do. Now that heart, I put on that heavy cardboard and I left this part in for you to show you that everything is fixable. I was putting that heart down with some matte gel because it was real um, heavy duty cardboard, like I said, and I couldn't get it to stick. I was trying everything and the more I was messing with it, the more fingerprints I had in it and I was getting frustrated. So I stopped and I thought, well, let's see if I can find another piece of that pattern paper because I really liked it. And I tried to see if I found another piece. Of course, one never buys just one piece of pattern paper. So I'm using that heart because I like the shape as a template and I'm cutting out another heart just in the pattern paper. So it's much thinner than putting it on that cardboard. So good note to self, you don't need to have that heavy duty cardboard down you just need to have the paper image and that will give you a much better area to adhere to the background. So now I'm going back, putting it down with my, I think I used matte gel because I had it out and stuck it down real good. So now I was happy. Set that aside to dry and I'm going to use my wash that I always do with my burnt umber Liquitex paint and some water and a brush and I'm going to add that brown as an antique over the whole piece. Here I'm taking off these magazines out of the back just to um, make sure that I'm going to have enough surface area for that piece to dry when I put all of this brown wet paint on there. I didn't want to wreck those magazines in the back. Covering the whole piece with my brown wash as I do all the time and I'm going to use more water in a spray bottle and a wet towel here and get it like I like it, giving it lots of texture and dimension and you see here I actually had some blue on my paint but I let it go. It's just a work in progress and it got to the point where I was just really falling in love with it now. Just loving the drips and the running of the paint and I've got to let it dry. I can always come back and add more but right now I just wanted it to dry. Here 
Here it's all dry. I'm going to use yet another stencil from Sean. It's so fun getting these in the mail and having her let us pick them out when she has new things. Now this one's called Numbers Jumble. I use it all the time. I'm absolutely in love with it. And I wanted to add some black to the background because I knew those butterfly wings were going to be coming shortly and I wanted it all to kind of come together. I'm using a stencil brush and my jet black archival ink and just placing numbers here and there to my background. I'm sorry this um, video is a little bit longer than most um, but there are lots of techniques in here and I didn't want to cut out any of those um, little mistakes and oops because sometimes it's nice to see how we overcome those. I'm trying to decide if we put down three butterflies. I thought those butterfly wings were a little too light so I set them aside into my stash and I'm adhering those butterfly wings with some matte medium and a brush. And my heart that I cut out from that journal paper, it has the writing on it. It looks real neat. And I thought two of the flying hearts were enough for this background. I didn't want it to be too busy. And then I was trying to think about what I'm going to write for my sentiment. And I thought, well, I just need one more of those hearts. And I adhered it next to my big um, red polka dot heart there. Those journal pages seemed a little bit bright for me. So I'm dulling them down with a little bit of my burnt umber wash that I had in my little jar there. Now I like it. So everything is dry. And I felt like maybe my uh, heart wasn't defined enough. So another technique that Sean has taught me by watching her. And I thought I would put some white gesso around the heart just to make it stand out a bit from the background. Give it kind of a, like an aura around it. And believe it or not, I think that it turned out pretty good. It took some doing and it was something I wasn't really comfortable with, but I really like it in the end. I'm looking at the finished piece as I'm recording this voiceover and I really love it. It's one that I won't give up. And then I couldn't decide if I should go over the wing or if I should go over the numbers. And like I said, it's a work in progress. So you just keep going until you feel that aha moment where you know it's finished and complete. So I'm just making sure that my white's not going on my heart and putting it behind so it feels like it's illuminating from behind. And I'm going to go around the butterfly wings also. Here I'm using another Sean Petit stencil and it's called Old Type Text. And I'm putting down my sentiments and I chose love and trust and dream. And then you'll see that I add to that as in trust you as yourself and dream big. I'm trying to not limit myself on my dreams and dream big and hope that I can reach them in the new year. I really like this stencil that Sean created because it has the three different sizes of font and what's really nice about it if you have it or you've used it is that the letters are just far enough apart where you don't have to worry about your stenciling 
um, it's easy to get in between all of the letters. Um, you'll know what I mean if you use it. It has just enough space in between the letters. It's really, really great, and I'm sure she thought that out, and she's great at designing her stencils. There'll be links where you can purchase stencils and all types of things on her website listed below. Now I'm really liking how it's turning out. I like that white glow behind the heart and I decided I wanted to put it around the butterfly hearts, if that's what we should call them. And I'll do it off camera because it does take a bit of time and I'm just deciding um, if this is going to work or not at this point. I knew I had the charcoal pencil that I need to do and that always pulls it together. And you'll see in the end. I, I believe it turned out real nice. Leave comments below. I love to hear from you. I will definitely um, respond as soon as you um, leave some comments. And here I saw this stencil that I had in my stash. I'm not sure what company it's from, but I will list it. And it had these great dots around the edge. And I thought, ooh, maybe that would really pull it all together to use that as a border. And let me know what you think. I think it really worked. And I'm using my archival ink again with my jet black archival ink and a stencil brush. I think it turned out great with that border on there. Using my 6B extra soft charcoal pencil. And there was a lot of stuff to outline here to give that definition of depth. And I really liked how it started to come together here. It was a fun piece in the end. It did take a little bit, but it, that's, that's, what, that's what I do. So creating was fun today. And I'll finish the charcoal pencil off camera so that it doesn't take too long. This video is getting long enough the way it is. I'm sorry about that. But it has, like I said, lots of fun techniques. And I hope you enjoyed. Stop by my channel if you have time and you want to see more of my creations. And of course, keep checking back with Sean. She has a great design team and we're also very fortunate to be a part of it. I did pull out my pan pastels in a couple of real fun colors. And I worked on those dots on the hearts. The colors of pan pastel, I have orange a uh, permanent red tint, magenta, some bright yellow green, and some turquoise. And I'm just using a sponge tip there to fill those in. And I did do a little um, dark um, charcoal on the left side to give them that depth. And a pastel a uh, pencil in white to add some of the highlights there. And in the end, I was real happy with the piece. I did go around the edge, of course, with that black chalk marker I have been using. And it's another product that I've come across and it works well for me. So use what works for you. Dig out your stuff and have fun and create. And I hope you liked this Valentine piece and share the love with everyone in your life. Thanks for watching and I hope to have a comment and chat with you soon. Check out my channel too please and subscribe.